Hello, I'm Chris. Uh, and this is Ableton Live 10. I originally didn't buy Ableton Live 10. I bought Live 9, um, and it's awesome, and I love Ableton Live 9. Uh, I bought it eight months before Ableton Live 10 came out. So I was a little disappointed at that, um, but fortunately I bought it the term I graduated, so I got uh, I got the student discount, so I got it at a fraction of the price, so I couldn't really be too, too upset about it. There wasn't in much in Live 10 to make me really envy Live 10 owners. Uh, they had the wavetable synth, which seemed pretty awesome. Uh, they had the convolution reverb, which to me the convolution reverb... I hate Ableton stock reverb so much. I think it sounds terrible. And um, so getting a new reverb was cool, but it it's a convolution reverb and I'm not the greatest fan of convolution reverbs. Um, I prefer just regular old, you know, getting spring, hall, plate, those kinds of sounds. To be honest, the best feature in Ableton Live 10 was groups within groups. There are so many times that I wish I could I wished I could put a group within a group, like one use case for that. I like to put my drum samples on individual sampler tracks instead of grouping them on drum racks. That way I can pitch the samples up and down really easily. In Live 10 now, what I can do is take all those sampler tracks for a drum kit that I made, group them into one group, Name that the drum rack, you know, the drum rack. And then I can group that within a group of all the drum racks in the tracks, which is great if you like to keep Ableton organized. Groups within a groups, it's just the best feature of Live 10, <laughs> to be honest. It also looks nicer. It looks way nicer than Ableton 9. Uh, that color theme was great. And I finally, I found a good color theme on Reddit for Live 9 that makes it look like Live 10. So I'll link that. In the description below because it just yeah if you still are on live 9 and you don't want to upgrade definitely check out that theme because live 10 looks really nice I didn't buy ableton live 10 but i did impulse buy ableton live 11 the moment i saw that announcement video the moment after i saw the announcement video they finally added the features to ableton live 11 that i've been waiting for in general with this update it seems like they're focusing their focus has kind of shifted so They've sort of mastered the workflow for making electronic music, and now they're trying to find ways to bring that workflow and make it work for other styles of music. I'm a guitarist and a keyboard player. I make indie rock. You know, I make really guitar-focused music. To have the workflow of Ableton Live now with the kind of features of something like Logic or Pro Tools is just so useful, and it's going to change. It will probably change the way I make music. Having the workflows of, you know, a Logic or a Pro Tools inside of Ableton just will make making music so much easier, especially for the style of music that I make. So what is new in Ableton Live 11 and why did I buy it? It's the feature that everyone's been talking about, everyone's been waiting for, it's comping. And comping is one of the most useful features I've ever seen in a DAW especially for my kind of music and the way my workflow, it's going to, it's just gonna make everything so much easier and it's gonna make making music in Ableton just so much easier. Comping is when you can take multiple, so you loop a section of audio and you take multiple takes and multiple recordings over that audio and then you can then slice up those takes into your final arrangement and your final, you know, audio file. So say you're recording a guitarist or a vocalist and you know they're not perfect. What you can do is you can have the recording going and loop a section of your track and have them just keep playing over top of it. Keep doing multiple takes, multiple vocal takes, multiple guitar takes, and you can then afterwards go through and take the best parts of each performance and construct your final performance out of that. So you can go through and you can just edit out each individual mistake and just take the best parts of each performance. Alternatively, you could improvise and then go through and take the parts of the improvisation that you liked and use that. So there were workarounds to do comping in Live 9. The method that Ableton recommends is for you to loop the section of audio that you want to comp over. Um, 
hit record and take your multiple takes over top of it. And what you're left with afterwards is a really long audio file uh, of all your takes that you then have to chop up individually to make your different, you know, comping takes, create an audio track for each take that you want to do, drag them over underneath one another, and then go through and use Live's arrangement tools to um, to chop it up, basically, and create your final comping take. And it just sucked so much. Around, I found if I was recording someone else, you know, playing guitar or singing, I would simply just go stick in session view and just hit a new clip for each take. So I would sit there and I would manually count the beats, you know, oh, it's gonna come up, here's the fourth bar or the eighth bar, here comes the next take and I would just press the next session view. And all that did was automatically chop up the samples. I still had to use Live's arrangement tools to do the comping takes, which is just awful. It's just, it's just terrible, it sucks. And I'm so glad they brought comping. What's great too is now you don't have to use the arrangement tools to do it. There's the draw tool, which makes it look so easy, just so, so easy to take each part of the recordings that you want. That's just amazing. What's great too, is it also works with MIDI. So you could loop your beat and improvise a bass line or a chord progression over top of it. And then at the end of it, you'll have each take that you made with that chord progression and you'll be able to slice it up. Uh, and just take the parts of your performance that you liked. Everyone always talks about how great this is for vocals, but it's great for other applications too. Like I said, I play guitar. So now I can just comp all my guitar parts and take the best part of each performance and create like a great performance to go in my song really easily. It also works with MIDI. So you could loop, say your beat, take multiple recordings, improvise a bunch of bass lines or chord progressions over top of it and afterwards just pick out the best chord progression or bass line that you played. It really is going to be game changing and if you're considering the upgrade to Live 11 that's the main feature you should be asking yourself do you need it and in my opinion you do. There isn't a single workflow that won't benefit from comping. Every other feature is sort of icing on the cake. So let's just go through some of the other features that I picked out that I thought were standouts. There's a new reverb, which I am equally as excited about. I hate the Ableton stock reverb. The stock reverb just, I don't know. I always have it sounding way too wet and way too artificial. And this reverb seems awesome. It finally has the kind of normal reverbs that I recognize from a guitar pedal. You know, the spring, the plate, the hall is a combination between a convolution and just a regular old processing reverb. Uh, on the um, processing side, there are spring, hall, plate, and there's even an awesome lo-fi setting, which I can't wait to get my hands on. So the new reverb uh, looks great. There's a new upright piano, which, um, you know, there's been the grand piano sample, and that's my main piano sample that I use. I um. I just haven't had a reason to really go out and buy a sample collection library for piano samples. I just try to use stock plugins as much as possible. So having a new alternative to that grand piano just seems awesome. And having an upright piano, yeah, it was a good choice. There's also tempo matching, which seems pretty cool, but to be honest, I, um, I don't have high hopes for it. I've always found that Live's BPM detection is just not the greatest. I use the looper built into Ableton, and uh, what it uh, one thing it does is automatically detect the BPM of whatever you've just played. And I just find that it's not the greatest. Um, even with the warping, I find the warping isn't the auto warp isn't really good unless the sample or unless whatever you're warping is sort of purpose built and kind of already perfectly in time and not very noisy or very textured, um, then the warping works great. But the second you add those textures, you know, the second you add a bit of randomness and unpredictability, the BPM just detection in Ableton just isn't, isn't the greatest. So, um, I'm not, I don't have high hopes, but you know, if it does work well 
and you know you're able to mic up a kick drum and get live perfectly in time with that kick drum then hell yeah i'm going to use ableton uh with my band that would be amazing it would make it so much easier to just match the tempo i imagine though you'll still need someone there to kind of monitor the bpm and make sure everything is in time and you know nudge the tempo up or down to keep live in sync the last feature uh worth mentioning uh is the 16 macros now you can have 16 macros instead of eight um that's awesome. I always found eight really limiting. It makes me wonder why they stopped at 16, especially because you can add and remove macros. So you can have anywhere between one and 16. You're no longer just stuck at eight. You can just have two macros if you want. But yeah, it makes me really wonder why they stopped at 16. You know, 24 or 32 just seems infinitely more useful especially if you like building huge synth racks, you know, with tons of oscillators and tons of audio effects on it, and you wanna just make it into your, you know, a full-blown kind of custom synth uh, in Ableton, having 24 macros just seems way more useful than having 16. So that's everything in Live 11 that I'm excited for. Let me know down in the comments what you're excited for. Uh, let me know if you bought Ableton Live 11. Maybe you're on Live 10 and you decide to upgrade. Maybe you're on Live 8 and you never upgraded to 9 or 10, let me know. I'd be curious to hear. That's everything I'm excited for in Ableton Live 11. Let me know down in the comments below what you're excited for. Uh, what was your reason if you decided to upgrade or didn't decide to upgrade to Ableton Live 11? You know, maybe you're even still on Ableton Live 8 and you never upgraded to 9 or 10 and now you're looking to upgrade to 11. So yeah, I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts and girls and uh, everybody else's thoughts uh, in the comments below. Like I said, I'm in the beta for Live 11, so hit subscribe, hit that bell, uh, and stay tuned for when that video drops. Oh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, Live 10 is 20% off right now, and you get the free upgrade to Live 11. That's why I have Live 10 now. So I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested and hop on that deal. Peace.